Welcome to Resolve in a Rush, where you'll learn useful Resolve tips and tricks in under five minutes. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Warper plugin of the Studio version of Resolve. I know we all like free stuff, but at 300 bucks, Resolve Studio is a great value, especially with all of these cool plugins. Anyway, the Warper plugin can be a great asset for visual storytelling. For example, if you have a villain in a story, and you want to accentuate certain features to enhance their evilness, this is a great tool. In this example, we have a shot of our character, and he's evil. Like, evil. From the fruits of the devil. Anyway, I want to exaggerate his eyes, nose, and chin, so you know exactly how evil he is in this scene. To do so, I'll go to the color page and start building my node graph. With the first node selected, I'll press Option S to add a serial node, and then I'll press Option P twice to add two parallel nodes. Windows users will use the Alt key instead. Lastly, I'll select the parallel mixer and press the Option S key again to add a final serial node. With that out of the way, I'll go back to the first node and open the tracker palette. And then I'll choose Stabilizer. I'm going to stabilize the clip in this first node so that the slight camera motion doesn't interfere with the warper effect. You can track the effect, but it was giving me some undesirable results with this clip. After stabilizing, I'll jump over to node 2 and move the playhead to the middle of the clip. Then open the effects library and search for the warper effect. Now I'll drag the effect onto node 2. When working with the warper tool, I like to start by adding limiter points. These basically pin the image down and restrict the influence of the warper. To do so, you simply press the shift key and then click around the area that you want to work on. In this instance, it's the character's eyes. With the limiter points in place, you simply need to click to add control points, then drag the control points to move them. If you need to delete a control point or a limiter point, just press the Option or Alt key and then click the offending point. Once his eyes have been altered to my liking, I'm going to bypass node 2 and move on to node 4 to work on his nose. The reason I bypass node 2 is to hide the warper effect so I can make this correction in isolation. Once I'm done with his nose, I'll bypass this node and move on to his chin and ear. I'm going a little overboard with this because the drastic changes are better for YouTube show and tell, but in reality you would probably want to be more subtle. With each area of his face thoroughly warped, I'll turn all of the nodes back on. Now to put the icing on the cake. As you can see in the effects library, there are no keyframe controls to animate this. But if you go to the keyframe palette and click on the disclosure triangle next to each corrector node, you can scroll down and turn on auto keyframing for the open effects parameter by simply clicking the small diamond icon so it turns red. I'll go back to the effects library and just wiggle the warp scale control to set a keyframe on each node. Now I'll move the playhead back two or three seconds and turn the warp scale control down to zero. Now as I play back, his face gradually contorts with his evil desires. I noticed on playback that the edges of the frame are moving around because of the stabilizer effect. I can use my final node to clean up the edges of the frame and add other color corrections if I need to. For example, I may want to add a bit of red to really add to this character's devilishness. And that's it. As you can see, the Warp Stabilizer is great for adding visual interest and enhancing the characteristics of certain scenes. For more great DaVinci Resolve training, check out riffletraining.com, the number one resource for DaVinci Resolve certification training.